Carl the Sixteenth Gustav's Golden Jubilee, and a history of Sweden. On September fifteenth, twenty twenty-three, King Carl the Sixteenth Gustav celebrated his fiftieth anniversary on the Swedish throne. He is the longest reigning monarch in the nation's history. Let's take a quick jaunt through Swedish history, from the Ice Age to the Viking Age, the rise of monarchy, the kingdom's struggles to control the Baltic and find its place in the world. We'll find out how a French soldier came to found the current dynasty, and how interconnected Sweden is to the other Scandinavian monarchies, all leading to the 50-year reign of Carl the Sixteenth Gustav, and a view to the future reigns of Crown Princess Victoria and Princess Estelle. As soon as the polar ice caps melted around 12,000 BCE, humans moved into the peninsula, which is now Sweden. Petrographs or stone carvings depict people hunting elk, reindeer, and seals, and fishing in boats. Scandinavian culture stretched across modern-day Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and parts of Finland. Even today, Swedes, Danes, and Norwegians can understand each other's languages. Agriculture emerged, and people lived in small farmsteads and shared wooden long houses. But the area was poor in farmland. It also lacked tin and the technology to mine copper, the ingredients needed to make bronze, which was fast becoming the metal of choice for making weapons, household goods, and jewelry. What Scandinavians did have was an abundance of coastline and trees, so they built longships, which allowed them to travel far and wide and trade for crops and bronze. Seafaring dominance gave rise to the Viking Age, beginning around 800 CE. Vikings became expert sailors and navigators. Goods from as far away as North Africa and the Middle East made their way to Scandinavia. Vikings were the first Europeans to reach North America and founded settlements there and on the British Isles, Iceland, Greenland, and northern France, which was named Normandy after the Northmen. Their ships could navigate rivers as well, and Vikings traveled deep into the heart of Europe. The Slavs called them Rus, or rowing men. Russia later took its name from these original Viking settlers. Most Vikings engaged in legitimate trade, but in times of famine, when they had few resources to trade, they did resort to raiding and piracy. During their attacks, they raped local women, and captured and enslaved people, and traded them or brought them back to Scandinavia, thus spreading their genetics along the way. But Viking was an occupation, not an ethnicity, and most Scandinavians were not violent seafarers. They were farmers, fishermen, and craftsmen. They had an advanced and complex culture, with laws, art, and architecture, and a written alphabet called runes. They had a high literacy rate and spoke multiple languages. Women could be traders and warriors, called shield maidens. They had extensive rights and prominent roles in society. The myth of the terrifying Northmen was greatly exaggerated by Christians, who did have some cause to fear the sudden attacks of pagan warriors, with no reverence for defenseless monks guarding hordes of treasure. Vikings adhered to the Old Norse religion, which was rich in mythology and ritual. Four days of the week in modern English are named for Norse gods, Tuesday for Tu, Wednesday for Odin, Thursday for Thor, and Friday for Frigg. So thank Frigg, it's almost Friday. There is evidence that the Norse practiced human sacrifice during times of war and crisis, though this was not as ubiquitous as pop culture makes it appear. The Viking image was further romanticized and tarnished in the 1800s. The cliché of horned helmets, which would have been totally impractical in battle, first appeared in the operas of Richard Wagner. All this trading and raiding did bring wealth back to Scandinavia, which led to social stratification and the emergence of local kings. But because the Norse were individualistic and there wasn't vast farmland to control, the monarchies were never able to implement feudalism. This top-down system allowed other sovereigns to amass incredible wealth on the backs of the peasants. Instead, common Swedes maintained more rights and wealth than their counterparts in Europe. 
while the monarchy remained relatively poor and focused on foreign expansion rather than domestic domination. Written accounts of Norse history are rare. The sagas record the names of some early rulers right along with dragons and sea monsters, so they're not considered reliable. The first historically corroborated king of the Svir tribe was Eric the Victorious. His son, Olaf, inherited the throne in 995 and took over at neighboring Gutaland. He was the first to mint coins, which proclaimed him, in Latin, Rex Sverum, or King of the Swedes, the anglicized word for the Svir tribe. He also introduced Christianity. For the next few hundred years, the Swedish monarchy was elective. When a king died, 12 districts sent representatives to the Thing, the Norse word for a council, which was held at the sacred stones of Mora. There, one among them would be proclaimed king. But the process was not as democratic as it sounds. Prominent families used their might to get elected over and over, creating de facto dynasties. The houses of Munso, Stienschil, Sverker, Eric, and Bielbo each had a turn on the throne, and power rarely changed hands peacefully. War and assassination often facilitated new successions. Now that the Swedes were Christians, they couldn't go around raiding other Christian lands, but they could go on crusade against pagans. With the Pope's blessing, King Eric IX conquered southern Finland and converted the Finns. According to legend, Eric saw a golden cross ablaze in the blue sky, a sign that God approved of his crusade. This vision became the Swedish flag. In the 1250s, a powerful Swedish noble named Berger Jarl established the capital city of Stockholm. Two of his sons would later become kings. In 1319, Magnus IV, the three-year-old son of a Swedish prince and a Norwegian princess, was elected king of Sweden and then inherited the throne of Norway. Thus, the two kingdoms were tied in a personal union. He also claimed Scania from the Danes and used a crest of three crowns to represent his three kingdoms. The triple crowns remains Sweden's national emblem. Magnus had two sons, Eric and Håkon. He promised Sweden to the elder and Norway to the younger. But Eric was displeased and led Sweden into rebellion against his father. Suddenly, Scandinavia was decimated by the Black Plague, which killed a third of the population. Prince Eric himself died, and in the turmoil, the Swedes deposed Magnus and elected German Albert of Mecklenburg as their king. Prince Håkon married Princess Margrethe of Denmark, and they had one son, Olaf. Margrethe's father had no surviving sons, so when he died, she moved to have her son, Olaf, declared king of Denmark. Next, her husband, Håkon VI, died and her son became king of Norway as well. Margrethe was a competent, wise, and well-respected regent. Her son, Olaf, died at 16. It was rumored that she had poisoned him, but this is unlikely. Margrethe held on to power and became the first queen regnant in Scandinavia. She invaded Sweden, uniting the three kingdoms in the Kalmar Union in 1398. Together, they were able to fend off the Hanseatic League of German merchant cities, who were dominating the Baltic Sea. I'll link my video on Margrethe I in the description. Margrethe ruled until her death at 59 and passed the throne to her nephew, Eric of Pomerania. From then on, the Swedish throne was hereditary. The Kalmar Union survived for 125 years, but as the monarchy was based in Denmark, the Swedes resisted their dominance. This era saw the rise of the Riksdag, the Swedish legislature. King Christian II, known as the Tyrant, ordered a hundred Swedes to be hanged or beheaded during the Stockholm bloodbath. One of the few survivors was Gustav Vasa. He led a successful rebellion and was named king of a newly independent Sweden in 1523. Gustav I ushered in a golden era of prosperity. 
and he led Sweden in the Protestant Reformation, which put it at odds with the Catholic nations of Europe. This came to a head when his grandson, Sigismund, unexpectedly inherited the throne. He had been raised in and was king of his mother's homeland, Poland. He was a devout and despotic Catholic. His intolerance towards Swedish Protestants sparked a civil war. Sigismund was deposed by his uncle, Karl IX, who established the Lutheran Church of Sweden. In 1618, tensions between Catholics and Protestants across Europe boiled over into the Thirty Years' War. King Gustav II Adolf was a brilliant tactician and took advantage of the conflict to seize territory in Russia and the Holy Roman Empire. He built the Swedish Empire and multiplied his nation's wealth. He had ambitions to become the next Holy Roman Emperor, but he was killed in battle leaving the throne to his six-year-old daughter, Christina. Once she reached adulthood, she was able to negotiate a peace treaty to end the war. Sweden lost territory, but still came out on top, with more land, trade, wealth, and power than before. Christina preferred romantic relationships with women and never married. I'll link my video on her in the description. She converted to Catholicism, moved to Rome, and left the throne to her cousin, Carl X Gustav, ending the Vasa dynasty and launching the Wittelsbach dynasty. Carl continued expansion, making the Swedish Empire the third largest in Europe after Russia and Spain. Carl invaded the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The deluge reduced Warsaw to rubble and caused more death and destruction even than World War II. A third of Poland's population was wiped out, and much of the nation's riches were stolen by Swedish soldiers. But the campaign ultimately failed. Karl next marched his army across the frozen sea between Sweden and Denmark. He successfully took control of Danish-ruled Scania. After half a century of warfare, the Swedish economy was deteriorated. What's more, the Great Famine of 1695 killed a tenth of Swedes and a third of Finns. Carl XI focused his reign on building and modernizing Sweden's army and navy. He left his son, Carl XII, a massive arsenal, which he used to jump back into conflicts and wage war on Russia. Tsar Peter I had a larger army, but was poorly equipped. Karl was a brilliant general and defeated Russia and Poland repeatedly in the Great Northern War. But he couldn't quit while he was ahead. He was shot to death in a battle against Norway. There is evidence that this was an assassination orchestrated by his brother-in-law, Frederick. As Karl was married to the military and had never fathered children, his sister, Ulrika Eleonora, became queen. She reigned for a year, but in 1719, the Riksdag pressured her to abdicate and make her husband, Frederick I, monarch instead. Despite Queen Ulrika losing her power, her abdication ushered in the Age of Liberty. During this era, common Swedes, including women, gained significant rights, and power shifted from the monarchy to the Riksdag. Ulrika and Frederick had no children, so a distant German cousin, Adolf Friedrich, was elected and established the Oldenburg dynasty. Over the next half century, the Swedish Empire fell apart, and Russia became the dominant power in the Baltic. Gustav III organized a coup to take back power from the Riksdag. He supported King Louis XVI during the French Revolution. A Swedish soldier, Axel von Fersen, who was in France fighting for the monarchy, had a notorious affair with Queen Marie Antoinette. He tried to help the French royals flee the country, but was unsuccessful. After Louis and Marie lost their heads, Napoleon Bonaparte took over France and set his sights on conquering Europe. Sweden joined the coalition against Napoleon, and though they lost several battles, they were not swallowed up by the French Empire. In 1809, Gustav IV Adolf went to war with Russia in a last-ditch effort to regain dominance in the Baltic. He was defeated and lost Finland after 700 years of Swedish rule there. 
His people were furious and deposed him. They gave the throne to his uncle, Carl XIII, but he was old, infirm, and childless. The Riksdag elected distant cousin Christian August as heir, but he died of a stroke during a military drill. The Oldenburgs were out of heirs, so representatives went to France to scout out a new king from the powerful empire. Napoleon offered his adoptive son, Eugène, but the diplomats found him dull and politely declined. Instead, they alighted on a soldier and protege of the emperor, Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte. He was elected heir presumptive and given command of the Swedish army. He won his new people over by forcing Denmark to hand over Norway in 1814. This was the last time Sweden was at war. Jean-Baptiste ruled as King Carl XIV Johan and established the Bernadotte dynasty, which is still on the throne today. His son, Oscar I, married Empress Josephine's granddaughter, thus the Swedish royals got some impressive French jewelry. Oscar focused on rebuilding peaceful ties with his neighbors and improving the economy. Peace, the smallpox vaccine, and potatoes allowed the population of Sweden to double, but waves of famine devastated the country. Between 1850 and 1910, more than a million Swedes immigrated to the United States, settling primarily in the Midwest. Carl XV's only son died in infancy. He tried to have his daughter Louise declared queen, but the throne was instead given to his brother, Oscar II. During his reign, Scandinavia began to industrialize, and Norway decided to leave the Union. Sweden let it go without a fight, and the king's grand-nephew, Prince Karl of Denmark, was elected as King Håkon VII of Norway in 1905. King Gustav V declined to have a coronation. Instead, he had a secular swearing-in ceremony. He was an avid tennis player and was famously blackmailed by a male lover. Sweden remained neutral during World War I. In 1919, universal equal suffrage, including women, was introduced. But industrialization had caused years of class struggle, which was brought to a head during the Great Depression in the 1930s. Because feudalism had never taken hold, and the people had retained a higher level of rights since the Viking Age, they had the mechanics to demand better from employers. The Grand Compromise gave rise to the Nordic system. Capitalism now coexists with a comprehensive welfare state, labor bargaining power, and a robust democracy. In the lead-up to the Second World War, King Gustav publicly objected to defense budget cuts made by the government. His interference was not welcome, and royal authority was diminished until the monarch became a figurehead. Sweden remained neutral during World War II, though they did continue economic partnership with Germany under the threat of invasion. King Gustav's Nazi sympathies remain controversial. His son, Gustav Adolf, spent 43 years as crown prince. He married Queen Victoria's granddaughter, Margaret of Connaug. The couple were very popular, but she died of blood poisoning at 38, while pregnant with their sixth child. Gustav VI Adolf became king in 1950. Shortly before his death, he approved the new Swedish constitution, which officially made the monarch purely symbolic. Gustav VI Adolf died in 1973 at the age of 90. He passed the throne to his grandson, the current King of Sweden, Carl XVI Gustav. He was born in 1946 during the reign of his great-grandfather Gustav V. His parents, Prince Gustav Adolf and Princess Sibylla of Zox, Coburg and Gotha, had four daughters, Margreta, Brigitta, Desiree, and Christina. But Karl was the first and only son. When he was nine months old, his father died in a plane crash. Karl became crown prince and heir apparent to his grandfather when he was just four years old. The prince attended boarding school and was active in scouting, a passion he continues to this day. 
he has dyslexia. After high school, he served two and a half years in the Swedish Army, Navy, and Air Force, including an around-the-world voyage. He studied economics at Uppsala and Stockholm universities. In preparation for his role as monarch, he studied government, trade, and domestic and foreign affairs. He spent time at the Swedish mission to the UN and worked in Swedish banks and businesses. In 1972, the prince attended the Olympic Games in Munich, Germany. There he met Sylvia Zomerlaut, who was working as an interpreter, and the pair clicked. She is half German and half Brazilian and grew up in both countries. On September 15, 1973, 27-year-old Carl Gustav became King of Sweden. He took the oath of office and gave a speech in the Hall of State at Stockholm Palace. He was enthroned on Queen Christina's silver throne from 1650. The crown jewels, King Gustav Vasa's sword from 1528, and Eric XIV's crown, orb, scepter, and key from 1561 were displayed but not worn, per tradition. At his ascension, the sovereign was still technically commander-in-chief of the military, so Karl was promoted to general and admiral. This role was removed when the new constitution was enacted in the first year of his reign, but he kept the ranks. He holds no political power and is expected to abstain from voting or publicly expressing political views. As a constitutional monarch, the king is officially head of state and opens parliament each year. He makes and receives state visits from foreign dignitaries and presents the annual Nobel Prize. In 1976, Carl announced his engagement to his girlfriend Sylvia. The night before the wedding, the couple attended a royal variety show where ABBA first performed their hit song, Dancing Queen, in honor of Sylvia. They were wed on June 19, 1976, in Stockholm Cathedral. The bride wore the cameo tiara which had belonged to Empress Josephine of France. Queen Sylvia is fluent in seven languages, German, Portuguese, French, Spanish, English, Swedish, and Swedish Sign Language. She is involved in several charities, focusing on child welfare and dementia and elder care. The couple had three children, Victoria, Carl Philip, and Madeline. At birth, Carl Philip was heir. But in 1980, Sweden became the first nation in the world to institute absolute primogeniture, which gives women equal right to men in the succession. Therefore, eldest child Victoria became the heir. The king objected to his son losing the position he was born to. But the Swedish people disagreed and Victoria remains heir apparent. The king is passionate about the environment and involved in climate change organizations and other charities. He is also an avid car collector and owns several Porsche 911s. The king and queen often attend the Olympic Games together. Carl Gustav is not seen as an especially inspiring king and is rather socially awkward. Memes of him photoshopped wearing silly hats have been circulating for years. Recently, tabloids and a book have alleged that he frequents sex parties and made promises of career advancement to young women in order to coerce them into sex, and that he had numerous affairs, including with a pop star named, coincidentally enough, Camilla Henmark. But, according to national polls and a survey I conducted myself, Swedes are generally pretty neutral on the monarchy. They may not especially love the king, but as he has no power to affect the system which consistently places Sweden among the 10 happiest countries in the world, they aren't motivated to change anything. The largest complaint is the public funds the royals receive, but at only 70 cents per person and $8 million total, the Swedish monarchy is the third cheapest in Europe. Carl Gustav recently removed royal titles from six of his grandchildren to allow them to make their own way in the world. Many value the monarchy's links to over a millennia of history, and the royals have leaned into that heavily with the Golden Jubilee. Exhibitions on the history of the monarchy have been hosted across the country throughout the year. 
2023 also marks the 500th anniversary of the election of one of the nation's greatest kings, Gustav Vasa, back in 1523. His reign has also been highlighted. The Jubilee Week began with the king opening the National Assembly. The royals hosted receptions and attended a performance at the Royal Opera at Drutningholm Palace. On the big day, September 15th, the family attended a Te Deum service at the Royal Chapel at Stockholm Palace, and the royal family waved from the balcony to the crowd below. A banquet was held at the palace that evening. On the 16th, the king and queen rode through Stockholm in a horse-drawn carriage. While Sweden may feel lukewarm about their king, his heir, Crown Princess Victoria, is far more popular. She was born in 1977 and became heir at the age of three. As a teen, Victoria struggled with dyslexia and media and social pressure. She developed anxiety and anorexia. She also has prosopagnosia, also known as face blindness, a cognitive disorder which makes it difficult for her to recognize even the faces of her family and herself. At 20, Victoria moved to the United States, where she received professional treatment and could escape the pressures of being a princess. She studied political science at Yale University and interned at the Swedish Embassy in Washington, D.C. She returned home where she continued her education and attended military basic training. Victoria has been candid about her struggles with mental health and is involved in numerous philanthropic pursuits. In 2002, she began dating her personal trainer, Daniel Westling. The couple lived together for eight years before marrying at Stockholm Cathedral in 2010. Prince Daniel is also popular. The couple both took leave from their royal duties when their two children, Estelle and Oscar, were born. The princess is known as the godmother of Europe, as she has been asked to stand as godmother to 18 royal children from other monarchies. The 46-year-old queen-in-waiting has gone on a number of diplomatic visits. She attends regular council meetings with her father and has acted as temporary regent. Her younger brother, Carl Philip, married model and reality TV contestant Sophia Helkvist, and youngest sister Madeline married British financier Christopher O'Neill. The three royal siblings have given the king and queen eight grandchildren in total. Some have wondered if King Carl might choose to retire and abdicate in favor of his daughter, as a handful of other monarchs have done in recent years. His jubilee would have been an ideal time to make such an announcement. But none occurred. The king has stated in the past that he has no intention of abdicating, as he believes he still has something to contribute, and because no one in the Bernadotte dynasty has ever voluntarily abdicated. Crown Princess Victoria will have to wait her turn to reign. After her in the line of succession is her eldest child, Princess Estelle. She was born in 2012 and attends school in Stockholm near Haga Palace where she lives with her family. Mother and daughter will likely someday be the fourth and fifth Queen's Regnant in Sweden's thousand year history. Want even more tea on history? Check out the History Tea Time podcast. You can now follow History Tea Time on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.